Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, I'm Chucky2009 and I make welding videos. So uh, tonight we're going to be talking about push versus pull MIG welding. It's like an endless debate. It goes back to the history of whenever people started arguing about welding on the internet. But anyway, uh, basically as you know, if you're going to MIG weld or a joint, basically uh, you take your MIG gun and you have two options on what exactly you're going to do. You can drag the puddle along, which would be me starting here, and sort of pulling it along. Pull it, drag it, you can use the terms pretty much interchangeably. Or I could do what's known as pushing the puddle, which for me, being right-handed, would mean starting over here and uh, just kind of pushing the puddle along like this. Now, what are the main differences, you ask? Well, that's something that, like I said, uh, everybody has their own opinion about. They say that if you pull the puddle, you get a little bit more penetration, and if you push it, you get a wider, flatter puddle. That I can confirm. Uh, but what about strength differences? Well, as you can see, I have these nice four pieces of 3 8 plate set up, and we're going to weld them with our nice Hobart 187 and HTP flex head MIG gun uh, to find out. Now, what are my thoughts on all this, you ask? I honestly think that if you're going to learn MIG welding, you should just learn both types and do what's most comfortable with you. Now there are people out there that are really gung-ho about if, it, if, if you're MIG welding something, you always push it because it's MIG and that's how it works, but the reality is there's no slag to worry about, so with MIG you can push or pull just depending, uh, but when you're doing flux core or stick or something that produces slag, you have to pull your puddle along because otherwise you run over the slag, it gets trapped in the puddle, and then you have porosity and wormholes and things along those lines. But uh, for me personally, I... Like I said, I highly recommend learning them both. If you learn how to push the puddle, I recommend that the first time you make weld, you try both. You do whatever's easiest for you, and once you have that one figured out, uh, then you go back and just figure out the other one. Now, if I'm working on thinner material, I'll take it on a case-by-case -case basis. I know a lot of people like to push the puddle on thinner material because they say it gives you less penetration. I'm the opposite way. I'd rather pull it because when you pull, Obviously, you're just dragging it along, so you have a different bead profile. Your puddle's a little bit smaller, your bead's going to be a little bit smaller, and I think it's a little bit easier to control. But uh, on thicker material, well, that's what that's what I don't really know about, hence the reason I'm making this video. So we're going to do a nice break test and uh, find out if pushing or pulling will give you a stronger MIG weld. And like I said, today we're going to be using this 3 8 plate that I went ahead and plasma cut and tacked up. And uh, you might be wondering why, and my reasoning for this is because the last time I tried to do a brake test with some MIG welds I ran, uh, we had a slight issue with the welds not breaking. <laughs> so instead of using a weld and a welder that are perfectly capable of holding together that thickness of plate, we're going to use something way underpowered for this job, my nice little Hobart 187. Don't get me wrong, I really like the welder. It's drop dead reliable, it has a really nice arc, but it only puts out 185 amps, and uh, that's just not going to cut it on 3 8 plate, especially with... 30 thousandths wire in here. So, uh, you know, hopefully these welds are definitely going to break. Now, one other thing I'll point out, so as you can see, I've gone ahead and, uh, and I've tacked these on the back so that way I can just cut these tack welds out once they're welded. And I've done this because I want this test to be a test of push versus pull MIG welding, not of my MIG welding skills, which is good because I'm an incompetent hack. But anyway, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just fire this thing up. Now, I am going to have this thing pretty much maxed out. So we're going to crank this up. And uh, give it a little bit more wire feed as well. And all right, let's do it. All right, now I'll just get this flex head gun exactly the way I want it. Uh, all right, welders hopefully set. And uh, I feel like I'm forgetting something, but as long as I don't catch on fire, I guess I did everything all right. Pushing the puddle, same settings, nothing is different, except for the obvious pushing of the puddle. Now 
Okay, YouTube, so I let these things cool overnight, and uh, I guess now we're ready to go. Basically, you can see with these, uh, with these couple joints that I pulled, we got some nice lack of fusion going on on that bottom toe line, probably a little bit up on the top there as well. Um, yeah, so we definitely did not get adequate penetration into these plates, which didn't really come as a surprise. But you'll notice that this bead is a little bit taller. It's a little bit high crown compared to these that we push. They're a little bit flatter, a little bit wider. And uh, actually, these don't seem to be having as much of a lack of fusion issue. But anyway, oh, this one kind of does. Anyway, I guess now we're pretty much just going to hammer these things apart and uh, see how they hold up. Let's do it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so first up, we're gonna do these joints that I pulled. All right, here we go. Ah, third one, and it snapped. Wow, yeah, that's, uh, that's a pretty nice clean break. Okay, well, let's do the next one. If nothing else, at least I cut these tacks out all the way. All right, let's uh, re-welder that. Yo, dog, we heard you like welders. Sweep so put a welder on your welder so you can weld while you weld. All right, they've cooled off. Let's get back at it. All right, cool. All right, now on to the ones where I push your puddle. Forty-four. Not bad. Wow, interesting. Wow, YouTube, that was interesting. I hope there's gonna be a little bit of difference, and there sure was. Let's have a look at this here. All right. You think I should probably clean my shop for the first time in about a year, but I'll get to it sometime. Okay, basically, with the welds that I pulled, the first one took 31 hits to break, the second one took 26, and then another 28, which is more difference than I thought there'd be. Um, and that averages out to 42 and a half hits to break a weld. Now with the ones that I pushed, uh, the first one took 44 hits to break, second one 48, which averages out to 46. And, uh, but what's really interesting is what you see when you look at these broken welds. Now as you can see, this is a failure of the weld. This is obviously one of the joints that I went ahead and pulled. And as you can see when we kind of fold it back up here, this cracked down the middle of the weld. Uh, you know, hence the weld is what failed, not the base metal. This weld is not as strong as the base metal. Uh, this is kind of a, an exception. But you know what? I don't... That still looks like a weld failure. It's just the top part of the weld. All right, so this is what a weld failure looks like. As you know, you can see it cracked right down the weld. Now, a failure of the base metal looks like this over here. As you can see when you look, the, uh, the weld is still in one piece, but there's an entire section missing from the base metal, and that's what's on the back side of our weld right there. And what this means is that this part of the weld was actually stronger than the base metal in this particular configuration, but I'll only take that so far. So you can see we didn't really penetrate all that deep or anything like that. 
So, uh, you know, what we have learned is that pushing a weld is minorly stronger than pulling it when you're MIG welding. I didn't really see that coming, but I'm not really surprised, you know. Pulling the weld is supposed to get a little bit more penetration, but when you push it, it's a wider bead with a little bit better tie-in, because you know it's wider, it's gonna tie into more of the base metal. So they each had something going for it. The question is what, what was gonna give the weld more of an advantage, and as we found out, when you push the weld, you know, you do get a slightly stronger weld. At least that's what this test would, uh, would demonstrate, and if I had to guess, I'm not an expert on this stuff, but if I had to guess, I'd say, What's causing that is because it's a wider bead, it's a bigger puddle, and the bigger puddle is going to hold more heat. So, you know, that might increase our fusion or maybe even our penetration a little bit. But however it works, I learned something new today, and I guess this test is a success. So, you know, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. I didn't really know I was stressed out, but I feel a lot less stressed after beating four welds apart. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for watching YouTube. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more. Have a nice night, everybody. Yeehaw.